Is this Derek and Haley's first podcast you've done together? I think it might be actually. We we did we did something like early on, like a little trial thing that we had. Well, we never shared it. We never shared anything. Yeah. So, yes, this is our first podcast together. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things with Sean and Andrew, a podcast all about couples and the things they go through. I'm pumped for this. I know we love this couple, Derek Huff and Haley Huff. Now, That's right? Um. We love them. They're in the middle of probably the wildest time of their life. They're newlyweds. They're in the middle of like a 45 city tour that you need to go see because it's incredible. It's actually coming to Nashville um, in a couple days. So if you're here in Nashville, come watch it. They are getting ready for a Disney special. Derek's uh, one of the head judges on Dancing with Stars, flying back and forth between his shows. They were very busy. It's wild. Here's what I didn't know about Derek. He's a three-time Emmy Award winning uh, artist and 13 yep. time nominee. He's a New York Times bestseller with his book called Taking the Lead that he wrote a couple mm-hmm. years ago. And we had the opportunity to go to Derek and Haley's wedding a couple months ago. And um, I haven't hung out with these two much, but I know that Derek has a special place in your heart. You guys obviously did Dancing with the Stars together, debatably should have won. We should have. We, <laughs> we don't really talk about that, but we do talk about. Uh, several things in this episode that I really enjoyed, including comparing dancing with athletics and the physical <laughs> demand that's required. Um, we talked about ambition. We talked about marriage and how they're approaching it. Um, a lot of discussion about death, oddly, in that. Uh, you'll listen and you'll find out what I mean by that, but in a good way, like really? in, in a meta, in a metaphorical. Oh yeah, I was way. like, did, I don't remember <laughs> that. Okay, yes, yes, um, yes. But. One of the highlights of going to the wedding for me was when Haley's parents approached Sean and were just giggled to finally yeah. meet her because apparently they're big fans. And uh, it was just as exciting to meet them. We have a lot of mutual friends with these two, and we think that you will want to be friends with them as well. Uh, so if you want to find out more about them, we'll link their socials down below as well as a website for you to check out their show called Dare Cuff Symphony, Symphony of Dance. Did yes. I say that right? Yep. Uh, which again is 45 cities. It goes through December 30th. And Haley, his most beautiful wife ever. Um, she is not only just like the kindest, most amazing person you'll ever meet in your life. She was on So You Think You Can Dance. She is an amazing dancer. Went on to do Dancing with the Stars as a dancer. Now is one of like the headline dancers of Derek and Haley's tour. Um, another, she's also a choreographer. You can find her on social media everywhere. They're just geniuses together and they just make you happy when you like talk to them. Honestly, just really honored to have these two mm-hmm. join us cause they are pretty hectic. Uh, and we hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, we bring you Derek Huff and Haley Huff. Guys, we've only been trying to get you on the show for like four years. Okay. <laughs> I know it's ex- exclusive. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask was, uh, Sean, uh, are you ready? How 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 close are you? I'm huge, you guys. I'm freaking huge, oh, girl. It's the cutest belly it's ever. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Sean That's keeps amazing. complaining about how hard things are, but we just watched your Shut day up. in the life real. Oh my god! Like, That's a grind right there. That's the grind. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, traveling on flights is way harder than uh, you know being pregnant <laughs> than creating a life form. Um, oh, yeah. a life form. I sound like such a, a nerd when I say life form. A life um, form. A life form. Oh, I'm so Wait, you guys are coming here guys. really soon. November 8th. Next week. Yeah. That's right. Next week. Nashville, baby. We're going to be Nashville November 8th. Um, can't we'll wait there. Grand Ole Opry. It's a, you know, iconic venue. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a whirlwind. It's been nonstop. We've been, you know, just like, you know, I posted it, but it's, you know, we were on four flights in, uh, in 24 hours, uh, two shows, Dance with Stars, rehearsals for this Disney special hosting and stuff. And yeah, it's been a it's been a lot. It's been a lot. But it's but it's great. It's really great. We love it. Yeah, it's been so much fun. And also like we take care of ourselves as much as we possibly can. Yeah. Like we have an amazing physical therapist that has kept our bodies together. Call her the body wizard. <laughs> the body wizard. <laughs> yeah. She literally has saved us. I, I just say I've had a lot of physical therapists, but she is 
a couple things with her real fast. I just had to share. <laughs> she makes these hilarious noises when she works with you. She's like, uh huh, yeah, uh huh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh. and then she's she, like, is feeling your body, and she's like, oh yeah, that's that's it. That's what it's yeah. supposed to feel like. And we're like, great. Or then she's just like sweating because she's working so hard, and she's just sweating and dripping sweat on you, and you're kind of like. Oh God! But keep going. This is great. You know? She's phenomenal. Oh, yeah, that would. She's, that would she works really harder than us. She's, she's the body wizard. She really is. She's incredible. Yeah. Um, it does seem like you guys put quite a bit of effort into taking care of yourselves physically. I just watched your "What You Eat in a Day" video, which was probably from two years ago. But you did the lemon juice. Fifteen minutes later, you did the celery juice, and you did the heavy metal anti detox smoothie. Well, and then I saw. Did I see you getting an IV in that in that day in the life video too? Love a good yeah, IV. Yeah, every Tuesday after right at, right after the show finishes on Dance from the Stars, right into my trailer, the guy's waiting for me, and I just he just. Why do you, you do know, that? Just hydration, um, immunity, boost my immune system. You know, all like the like glutathione, muscle recovery, um, B twelve, all, all the you know all the stuff just to kind of because especially traveling a lot as well, just to boost the immune system. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it, help, it I mean, helps a lot. I have a hard time. Everyone goes on Dancing with the Stars, or I hear dancers talk about how physically demanding dancing is. Honestly, I have a hard time comprehending that because as an athlete, it's like, okay, we're pushing weights and we're doing sprints, and dancing just yes. feels more subtly active. But can one of you explain the, the physical fitness required there? Sean just shaking her head no. <laughs> It's way harder. Well, actually, I, I'll say this, which is kind of cool. So the, the thing is, what I love actually about Dancing with the Stars is how it has actually changed perspective of the athleticism of dance. And I think a big part of that is some of the athletes who come on the show where you have these Super Bowl champions, World Series champions, hockey players, and they come on there and they're gassing out doing a 30-second rumba. You know what I mean, and um, and it's kind of, it's, so it's kind of been cool to see that because um, it just shows the athleticism of the of the dance. And one thing I loved about um, Kobe Bryant actually, there's a video of him out there that's really beautiful. He's speaking at USC, and he had this Achilles tendon problem. He kept having this injury over you know seasons and seasons, and he um, he eventually went to tap dance class. He took tap dance for a whole summer. And he said it was the only thing that really strengthens Achilles. Um, and then he mm. he went on record and he said, like, I really believe that dancers are more athletes than we are. And I was like, Can you say that again? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but 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 I think what it is too is it, it's it's different because, for instance, when I'm dancing with Haley, if I'm doing like a tango, you know, I'm, there's a lot of body twists. So imagine carrying, you know, like you know those those balls, you know, when, when you work out with the, the med balls. The, Medicine balls, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know those balls that you work out. You know, like, <laughs> you know, imagine like grabbing one of those, but it's a hundred and it's a hundred and something plus pounds, and then you have to dance with it and carrying it. You have to lift it, and then you have to twist it, and then you have to put it under your legs, and then you for you know a minute straight, and that that just that that motion, that sort of four dimensional motion is um is exhausting. You know what I'm saying? So. It's not like powerlifting or certain things, but it's it's just the four dimensional movements that is what is exhausting because it's this it's a small little twitch, mm. you know. In sports, there's the twitch, you know. There's the the jumps, there's the the spins, there's the there's so many different elements to it. So I think that it's a uh, it's just different because I think sometimes too as well. And if I go on a jog, I can run for. I don't know, for a while, I can run a couple, you know, five miles or something like that, because you can find a rhythm, you can find your breath, you can kind of steady yourself. But in dancing, it's like, sometimes it's like, you, you don't really get that opportunity to sort of like, mm. you know, find your rhythm because you're constantly changing and, and it's, um, but, uh, but, uh, but I dance with the stars, I get it. Cause it's like, a, you know, you're at a minute routine, but it's the rehearsals, yeah. drilling it hour yeah. after hour after hour we call it being in dance shape because we could go to like an f45 class every single day the entire week and then we go into a rehearsal and we're still gassed and we're like why is that because you're using different muscles it's a different endurance it's just it's hard to really explain it's just different but we call it being in dance shape there's a difference between being in shape and being in dance shape yeah. <laughs> Wait, but also too sorry we keep talking we're, we're just going off <laughs> no i love it um but also it's like 
it's funny because like I'll do a show and I'm it's like I'm at the peak of my you know performance. I feel strong, and then I'll just go play a pickup game of basketball and I can't walk the next day. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like it's just because you're just using different muscles, different muscles as well. So, but yeah, wow. I I will never forget dancing during the All Star season. I was that was brutal. There's no way it's that hard. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's not I'm no, sorry. I went from I had just retired, so I was going for the Olympics. I was basically in Olympic shape. That is hard. Yeah. We would be it's, dripping it's also, sweat it's also, every day. It, also, it's the it's the it's the repetition of it daily, right? Like we're like when you're learning something you're figuring your body's figuring it out so you have to drill it over and over and over and over and over again and that's what's like exhausting when you watch the dance on the show i agree with you like when you watch it and it's a minute and a half you're like oh that easy doesn't, that doesn't look that hard like that doesn't look exhausting it's the it's the rehearsals of drilling it over again that's that's the exhausting part truly and then by the time you get to the show you're just like it's kind of like in like like one of mma right they're kind of yeah. like hey man the fight is the the fight is the fun part, you know. It's yeah. like the training is so difficult, so exhausting that by the time they get to the fight, they're just happy to be in the ring. Like finally, we get to actually just do our thing. Hey, that's kind of how it is with dance, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's good. You mentioned. I think that. the only way to get you to really understand Andrew is to throw you in the fire. That's it. Where's going? I think we need to start getting you to dance. <laughs> let's get let's get Andrew on the next season. Thirty three. Yes, uh, I want to campaign for him to be on so bad. She just wants to <laughs> blast me and make fun of me. That's Sean, that's Sean's. I will be sitting right front there. row the whole time. <laughs> so excited, Derek. Let me tell you something. I try to get Sean to dance more than I care to admit, and she will not do it. And she says she doesn't know how to dance. Every time she would dance with you, you just pull her around the dance floor. Is that a thing? <laughs> did, like did you let her dance? Does, like, is she a good dancer, Derek? She's a great dancer. You can dance, I know. Sean. I can memorize choreography. Okay, I can't just like get out there and do it. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. you. I feel you on that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm similar in the sense sometimes. If I'm honest, like you know, people are like, oh, Derek, he's dance. Get out there and dance. And I'm like, I'm not really the improviser kind of thing. Like I I am I'm like I like to know what I'm doing. I like to kind of like, give me some structure. Like yeah. But these new like our dancers on this tour, we're just like do something for eight two eights, and they're just like genius, just brilliant like movements. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't do that anymore. Like, it's a different <laughs> it's a different generation, you know. It's amazing. I think the most intimidating dance floor I've ever seen in my entire life was your guys' wedding dance floor. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you ain't lying. I was like, I think I'm good. I think I'm I think we'll just stand back and watch. Dang. There was a lot of dancing that night. Everybody was going to town. I loved that there were like little dance circles happening too. <laughs> yeah. It was like all of a sudden you just see like different Three different circles, and all of them were like full dancers, just going hard. <laughs> yeah. Some were like head banging. Yep. Some were doing like an add-on, you know, dance game. Some were doing a limbo. Some were doing like full partner dancing. Like Some were doing she, oh yeah. Catwalk. Oh, going, she was dancing that night. Yeah, Mark Ballas's mom, yes. Shirley. Um, she, I mean, she brought her Latin shoes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. she, she was ready to dance. She's like, oh, she's gonna put my Latin shoes on, and she got out there and she was doing a full. <laughs> competition performance with everybody and we were just like oh there she goes it was so fun <laughs> so fun it was awesome Haley, that was an epic day i'm curious from your perspective was there one moment that stuck out and if so what was it oh, oh one moment is so hard to pinpoint in a day full of things but i would say probably my like my most memorable, and it was kind of my one of my first of the day too, was walking down the aisle. Mm. I don't remember anything that happened. I actually don't even remember seeing the scenery. That was all. It was gorgeous, but I don't remember seeing any of it. I was like straight tunnel vision to Derek the entire time. That I didn't hear anybody. Mm. I didn't. My mom was like, "I said breathe, honey," and I was like, "I literally did not hear that at all." I don't know why. I was just tunnel vision to him and just walked straight to him. That was a really, like, a really special moment. Yeah, it was amazing. That was, yeah, man, I don't know. It was always really special, I, I think. Know. All of it was amazing. This fall, we've been passionate about family traditions. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite fall traditions is making pumpkin French toast for breakfast because pumpkin is everything. It leaves your house smelling dreamy all day long. And something else I've been passionate about is making sure I'm using 
top of the line ingredients and making simple swaps where we can. We've officially made the swap to Eglin's Best Eggs, which has been a game changer considering we eat eggs for breakfast, we use eggs for baking, for cooking, you name it. We eat a lot of eggs in the East House. <laughs> we do. And we're big fans of Eglin's Best because they're available in classic, cage-free, organic, hard-cooked, and various frozen varieties. So there's an egg for every occasion. Who knew? <laughs> Plus, they have been the recipient of more than 100 awards for their superior taste, mm. nutrition, mm. freshness, mm. and variety. So you know their eggs have got to be good. What's most important to me is that compared to ordinary eggs, Eglin's best eggs contain six times more vitamin D, 25% less saturated fat, 10 times more vitamin E, and more than double the omega-3s and vitamin B12s. I feel like it's so apparent whether you're eating a high quality egg or a low quality egg. And how do you tell? Answer me. Taste. Yes. And color. The, yes, exactly. The color of the yolk. Yes. Anyway, how can you tell that you're using an Eglin's Best Egg? Look for the distinctive EB stamp right on the shell. Eglin's Best Eggs are available nationwide. To find a local retailer, visit eglinsbest.com. And if you want to make your own pumpkin French toast or watch Andrew and I make it, you can find the video of our family recipe on YouTube. Just search East Fam. Let's go. We'll link it down below. There was definitely one moment for sure, um, you know, her walking down the aisle and, you know, when you're outside too, there's there's a few little bugs and stuff that, that we were kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. we, we acknowledged that. But it didn't bother us, honestly. We kind of knew that going in. We're like, we're, we're kind of committing to the outdoor setting and it's, it's going to be the outdoors, you know. And um, But... Uh, but seeing her walk down was was really just really really special. Um, there was a moment I will say what people always ask like you know does does something ever go wrong? And there was one thing that uh, <laughs> the the welcome party the first day right before people showed up for the first day it's like you know here we go oh, yes <laughs> and I'm like you know what I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna we're on we're on a cliff on the ocean in this beautiful cabin and it's a little chilly a little chilly nice and cozy the marine lair we've got the the wood this like stone fireplace I'm like you know what? I'm gonna light a little fire like this is gonna be so romantic no. and beautiful and so I and it's kind of gas you know you turn it on but it's it's real fire it's real wood but you turn the gas to kind of get it going so I turn the gas on and it just it is on it is a light. The thing is a flame. And I kind of walk out. It's, it looks great. He was like, oh, this is totally fine. And he just like leaves the house. And I'm oh, getting no. ready in the house, like full hair and makeup. All of a sudden, I'm like, it's getting really smoky in here. That's and weird. I turn around and the room is just full smoke. Full smoke. I don't know if the, the flute, the flute the wasn't open. open or something. Oh, no. Pumping, dude. It was I, there was a little gust and the pumping smoke in there. I sprinted into because right next to that room where the fire was, where all of my dress is, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, my dresses are gonna smell like smoke. It's gonna be like they're gonna get all smoky." I sprinted in there, closed the door, was opening all the windows. Oh, Emma, my makeup artist, and Jill, my hairstylist, were like trying to waft it out of the house oh, as much gosh. as possible. I eventually showed up. I I kind of popped into the scene and I'm like. Oh, <laughs> and then I, I grabbed the, cl you know, the the clamps, I grabbed the, <laughs> yeah. the fiery logs, and I'm like, oh, these, like fiery logs oh, out of the house. Oh my god! That's a great way to take a bad situation and make it. It's worse, a great way to light that entire house. <laughs> yeah, oh my yeah. Gosh. I, exactly. It was it was pretty terrible, and, and you just like little coals falling on the floor and stuff. And um, and then like our wedding party was coming, and they were doing the same. They were like grabbing sticks to try to like yeah. lift them all the logs. Yeah. Luckily, out. it was. Crisis averted, but it was a it was definitely a moment. And luckily, We're that was just alive. the first day, and then it, nothing else really happened after that. <laughs> well, you didn't ask, but I th there's there's three moments that I distinctly remember from your wedding. One is yep. Derek's face, watching Derek's face, watching you uh, walk down the aisle. That's always yeah. one of my favorite. That was just really special. Two yeah. is the first time I felt Palo Santo in my nostrils. That was just freaking magic, dude. I'm addicted to it, Derek. <laughs> I am no. addicted to it. No, so much so, it, it's become a massive argument in our household. Thank you very much, you guys. Because he keeps Wait, buying what? it and lighting it in our house. Do you so, light it in your house? Yeah. So okay. actually, which, one, which are you talking about? Be... Palo Santo no. or the Copal? Like the big, the smoky Palo stuff Santo. that was coming. Oh, Palo Santo. Palo Santo. Okay. Yes, we no, do No, no, he's house. getting whatever is like really smoky that's supposed to be lit outdoors. And he lights it in our house. And then I come home, and similar to you, our house is filled with smoke. 
And <laughs> our daughter's like, why is it cloudy? And I I'm like, it. oh my gosh. I need more. But but by the way, when you came up, I, can't, I have to tell you something. So there's so many different parts of the wedding that we planned, so many different elements, and I'm like all about the experience and like and smell is like a big thing for me. Yeah. So that was like a big item on my list was like make sure that there's fresh copal being burnt every five minutes with like coals and like Palo Santo. And so when you came over and you were like, dude, what is that smell? I love that. <laughs> I I can't tell you how I literally made his day. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it made Wait. his life because the two things that were important to him that day were the music along the along the path and the scent. And wow. so you pointed out one of the things, and he was like, "My life is made." I was like, "Here's yes. the thing, dude," because I'm not a big smell guy. Sean, I'll tell you, I can you, barely like, get this guy to wear deodorant. Yeah, I don't, I don't. It doesn't do it for me. But I smelled Palo Santo, and I was like, "I need no, that." No, Paul. I'm gonna whatever. Well, yeah, I don't even know. We gotta find the right one. It was a mixture. Because it was a mixture. It was a mixture of both of them. The Copal is the one that's supposed to be burned outside. So, so if outside you're in the house. But Palo Santo, you actually can burn that in. A little bit, yeah. yeah. You just kind of but you do a little bit. Okay. No, he lights it on fire till it's like ablaze. And then I eat it. Sometimes <laughs> I just eat it. But anyway, for those listening, apparently Palo Santo is like a Peruvian tree that if you light it, it smells really good. And you you won't regret trying it out. So anyway. It's, uh, but the it's third moment delightful. was the pyrotechnics. When you guys did oh, the yeah, dance and Haley did the... And then Derek did the, and I was like, oh okay. my gosh, it's oh, okay. epic, That's dude. Good. Anyway, sorry. That was- <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that was, that was also another little Derek thing. He was like, we have to have the cold sparks. We have to have That's them. Sick. And I was like, okay, here we go. Those were a few, fu- so few we, touches. So what we did have, I'll tell you what. Okay, so for our, for our first dance, people often ask, like, was your first dance this, like, big choreographed, you know, crazy dance? I'm like, no, but what we did and what we wanted to do was, it was just the two of us in the barn, and everybody was outside of the big doors, and then we kind of started the dance, and the original idea was that we were going to have ground fog, and oh. filled the, the whole room was going to be filled with ground fog. So it looked like we were like just dancing on a cloud. On a cloud, you know? And then the thing would open, and then everybody would join us. We had the ground fog there, but we tested it out, but it wasn't like laying. It was just like going everywhere, like oh, like Andrew's Palo Santo. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and so we, we had to cut it, but I was like, so I was like, oh no, nothing oh, real fuck. But yeah, I was like, was... our wedding videos will be ruined because all of a sudden we'll just be oh, in yeah. a cloud, like an actual cloud <laughs> yeah. and won't be able to even see us. I was like, we can't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was awesome though. Yeah. It was awesome. It was I was going to ask, I mean, a deeper question after this, but you guys are the most creative people I've ever met in my life. The stuff you guys create together individually is true art and when you're creating this moment that is supposed to represent your guys's life together how like how did you even begin creating your wedding moments because you could literally i mean i've seen you create the wildest things you could create anything i think I think the first thing was just the place, right? Was the nature. Nature was the first thing. We were like, okay, that's the that's the foundation of where we want to be, get married, and we want to celebrate because it just means a lot to us. And the, um, and just some of the creatives and stuff like that. A lot of Pinterest, a lot of looking <laughs> up stuff. A lot of inspiration. But this one right here, as far as just the execution, organization, log- like logistics, like laying it all out i mean she literally did that entire thing it was un- masterful you know truly yeah well yeah, done it Haley. was it was thank you it was um you feel the pressure because you're like this is literally a once in a lifetime thing it has to be perfect but then i was like actually it just has to be perfect for us so i was mm-hmm. like what are the most important things that we want we knew that we wanted it to be in nature we knew we wanted it to be with the people that we loved most we knew we wanted it to be intimate we were like we don't want to have a massive wedding we want to have just like the people that are really important to us um and we just knew that we were like okay it has to be a a great time like so we had to have the dance party we had to have lots the live band was dancing that was the live band was actually that was kind of a we were on the fence at first because you never know with a band you're like they might be (laughs) sometimes they feel like a rah rah rah, rah, rah." you're like oh no 
You were like, I don't know, but they were great. But we were like, yeah, let's have them, and they were phenomenal. We loved yeah. them yeah. so much. But good old time. But yeah, it was it was honestly really fun to plan that because I was like, this is something that we're going to have for the rest of our lives as a memory and on video and photos. And it was perfect. It was fine. I was kind of planning the tour creatively, and then she was planning the wedding. Kind of like we were kind of going like simultaneous, simultaneously yeah. doing that. But uh, but yeah, I, I was a part of it a lot more you than were... than than, yeah. than I've heard from in the past. Like you know, dudes. <laughs> I had to just keep being like, okay, what's actually important to you? Like, what do you want? Because Paolo I Santo. I can't have him. <laughs> yeah. That's have it. Everything. That's my one requirement. Yeah. And that was what was important to him. <laughs> Andrew's one requirement for our wedding, I still remember this. You could have cared less about anything. You're like, you go do you. He's like, but I have to have string lights. I love it. I, I was love like, good string what? Lights. Random. But okay. Really gets the vibe. It's, hey, it's, it, by the way, it's funny. We were just talking about that the other day. We were, I think we were in uh, Chicago and we we're just walking through the city and we we're just like, okay. And then all of a sudden you see like the street with string lights. You're like, oh, let's go down there. Let's go down oh, there. Yeah. Like, it's like, there's just something like, oh, it must be a good restaurant. Yeah. It must yeah. be an amazing place if it has string lights. Yeah. yeah seriously. It's something like so like warm and welcoming and romantic about it, you know, and it's just like some like $30 string lights, you know, and you're like, it must be a great restaurant. Where'd you guys do your honeymoon? We did it in Italy. Italy. Mm. Amazing. Did, we, we, did, you, we, we were all over. Were you able to fully enjoy it while also getting ready for the tour? Or did you feel like you had to rein it in a little bit? No, I think we did. We were able to kind of switch it off a little bit, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah, just kind of enjoy the moment, kind of carry the, the, the excitement from the wedding into the honeymoon. Um, I think knowing that we were about to go on tour too really made it like, okay, we have to be present during these two weeks mm. because we're about to go on a crazy adventure, which is amazing, but we have to like ride the high of the wedding right now. And it was, yeah, it wasn't, actually that bad <laughs> when we were, when we were we were in rome for a day and she made we were at the uh the trevi fountain oh and she goes babe this is where what's her name lizzie mcguire so this is where lizzie mcguire yes and I'm like, <laughs> i was like what are you what are you talking about <laughs> and so on our honeymoon in a hotel room we watched lizzie, lizzie, lizzie mcguire, mcguire movie uh, and yes he was he was like babe this is not what am I watching right now? <laughs> this is it's also not great. <laughs> shockingly bad when you go back to no, watch but those I movies. actually it actually was it was so it was so funny. I was laughing like gutturally like laughing because it was I was like, this can't be real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But so um, watch that and then immediately after watch Gladiator. So yeah, exactly. we were, we oh, the, you know, wow. two very different Polar opposites. Um, but uh but it was but it was really magical. The only thing I would say that the last three days I got, I got like sick, you know, of oh, course. God. Um, but, um, but we stayed, the last place we went to was Patera, which is this ancient city where our, basically our room was a cave. We stayed in a cave. It was really, really cool. Cause the city is 10,000 years old. It's the third oldest city in the world. In the world. That's and amazing. it's the, it's the number one oldest city that's been continuously lived in. Yep. So from like, caveman mm -hmm. like literally caves to like bronze and stone the whole thing um all the way wow. up to now it's it's been like uh populated so it's the number one oldest city that's been continuously populated in the world it's it was stunning pretty cool really pretty cool. cool i'm curious you guys met in 2014 or started like dating in 2014 yeah um, we started dating in 2015 but we met in 2014 yeah okay so you guys have been together a long time yeah. You guys have overcome a lot of obstacles and just like a lot of time together. Why get married? Why now? Good question. It's a good question, good question. for you. It's a good question for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Why did you decide now? You know, that's a good question. I think um, to be completely honest with you, I think that for me, I've always had a kind of honestly a negative association with marriage to be honest mm -hmm. with you i think that um you know most of the important people in my life you know my my mom and dad they got divorced you know parents that lived within england they got divorced uh my sister like, just so much divorce in my in my life i think that i never really um it, it for me it was just like well, what's what's the point you know like I, i'm good like this, maybe it's not something for me um, and then honestly too, then over time when we started dating, we, 
started surrounding ourselves with couples, with people who were married and had great relationships, and they were just great examples of 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 marriage, essentially, which was really, I think, just a good, um, just good to be around, you know. Um, I think also too with us, I think our relationship. It was interesting when we first met. It was our relate. We we had our version of our relationship. We've had like ten different versions of our relationship. So many versions. And um, and I think and and we went through so many. You know, in our vows, we talked about it. We walked through fire together. We really have. Mm-hmm. We've been through some in, insane obstacles insane moments that would usually crush and destroy couples. Um, and, but we came, we would always come back and, um, you know, there's been times when our relationship ended and, and uh, there'd be times when our, when our relationship was over and it was dead, you know? And, and I mean that in a beautiful way because it was that version of the relationship that needed done. to die. You know what I mean? It was almost like our, this relationship is over. But now it's, let's start this new one. Like this is, you know what I mean? So it was almost mm-hmm. like, it wasn't like it's over and then we're gone. It's like, it's over. But that was like almost like a freeing and a beautiful feeling because it was like, now let's begin this, this, this new, you know, chapter, this new version of who we are together. We actually heard a, a quote by Esther Perel and she said, you can have multiple relationships with multiple people. Or you can have multiple relationships with the same person. And we were like, we felt so seen and heard because we were like, that's literally what has happened throughout the entire time that we've been together. It's like we've had so many different relationships with each other. And it's really beautiful because each one is better than the last. And and also, I think it it just showed us and it it basically reaffirmed for me like, okay, we're going to change we're both going to change. We're both going to evolve. We're both going to grow, but, th- but that's, we're going to grow as we go, you know, together. And there's that great song by Ben Platt. It was called grow as you go. And so good. And that's kind of part of the symbolism of us getting married and uh, having dinner in the garden, you know, um, it was the idea of growth, the mm. idea of, of, you know, things in nature are not straight lines. They're not, yep. you know, clean. It's, it's, mm. it's tangled. It's crazy. It's messy. It's this and that, but it's so, so beautiful. beautiful. Um, and so once I felt like, to answer your question, once I kind of felt like I knew, oh, we can get through anything, we can go through anything, but I feel confident that we will, we're going to change and grow at, together, then I was like, then the, I'm, I'm fully, you know, committing to this, you know, and, and to us. So, yeah. As a parent, I spend more time scrolling through the TV and like all of the programs trying to find kid friendly content than I would care to admit to. And it's really hard to find something that checks all of the boxes and is like good morals, good values, teaches your kids good things. But also is entertaining. <sighs> it was it's impossible to always find and it takes so much effort until we found the streaming service Minnow. Minnow is the premier streaming service for kids that offers faith based and values driven content that parents can always trust. We are so excited to be partnering with Minnow because we truly believe in this company and what they stand for. Minnow has tons of shows, movies, and devotionals that touch on a variety of topics to keep your kids engaged while also filling their minds with what matters most. Some of our kids' favorite shows include Veggie Tales, classic, I grew up on it, Coco Talk, they got the Laugh and Grow Bible series. There's so much good stuff on there. Over 3,000 different videos that your kid will love and you can trust. It's perfect for family movie nights, sick days, or just some downtime. And let me tell you, guys, I have notes in so many places around our house, on my phones, of blacklisted shows. You'd never have to worry about that with Minnow. It's all amazing content. Plus, all their shows and movies are screened by a team of parents, pastors, and educators to ensure that they're age-appropriate, entertaining, and align with faith-based values. I love that we never have to worry about questionable content or ads popping up because we know that Minnow has our kids' best interests in mind. Not to mention that the shows are cute, catchy, and super fun. Our kids love them. Whether you're a parent looking for content to watch together as a family or just need a break and want to be able to press play and feel okay, try Minnow. We stream Minnow in our house and we want you to do the same. Head to GoMinnow.com and use the code FAMILYMADE to get your first month for free. 
That's G-O-M-I-N-N-O dot com forward slash family made for one free month of Minnow streaming service. If you want shows that are as entertaining and engaging as everything else, but that reflect your values and teach your kids about the things that actually matter, sign up for Minnow today. That was a beautiful description. I love I love uh, the concept of something dying. Mm-hmm. And I, I think what gets me so excited about marriage is I truly believe that it's the best tool for like self-improvement that you can have. You know, we live in an age and it seems like you guys are, are in on this too. I love it. It's like taking uh, an ice bath and you get energy or, you know, you yep. take a mastermind, you're part of a mastermind and you get good ideas and good connections, but like, there's nothing like, um, the self edification that, that marriage can create. And, something will die i think what's unique about marriage is instead of killing the relationship and like keeping yourself constant it becomes killing some version of yourself and the relationship stays constant which is so incredibly powerful it's super challenging and i know you guys are you've been together for eight years but marriage is just starting you'll have kids and like there's always this constant death that's kind of happening and it's like oh my gosh the person that i was before marrying Sean is so drastically different. I'm thankful for that because that means that marriage is working. It's like this mm-hmm. feedback mechanism that like is ref- is so refining and it's powerful. So I'm excited for you. Well, and I'm really glad you. you answered it that way because it's actually something we talked about at your wedding when we like left the welcome ceremony. And I just said it was so powerful to be surrounded by so many amazing people who are so close to you in your life but who have all gone through divorce and seeing you guys stand up there willingly and so beautifully wanting to take on marriage it just made us so excited for you and so excited for like our marriage because in a world that I feel like really preaches that commitment doesn't work it, it does and it can and I just I thought it was amazing to watch. Yeah, but that hurt, though. I mean, it hurts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shut it. It hurts. (laughs) But Yeah. 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 Well, thank you guys for that. And honestly, one of the best things that came from our wedding was all of the people that were in relationships or maybe even weren't in relationships. But the people that were in relationships, they were like, your vows just made us want to go renew our vows. Mm. Or like the way that you guys looked at each other just made us be like, I want to be closer. Like it inspired people there. And that was really special to hear from the people that we love the most. We were like, wow, the fact that our relationship can inspire anybody was so beautiful to both of us. We were I think, like, that was so special. I think part of that was just, was just, again, we've been together for so long, you know what I mean? And, and again, been through so many different things and it was just this assurance of like, Hey man, we've we've gone through some stuff, like you know, and and hey, mm-hmm. we can we can not just get get through, but we can thrive. Yeah. You know, we can mm-hmm. thrive together and 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 really, you know, that's what's so beautiful about relationship in general is it amplifies everything. Yeah, it just turns the it turns the volume up. You know, the, when you experience something, I remember going to Hawaii by myself, and I was like, you know, in helicopters doing fun stuff, and it was cool, but it was like, you know. It was it was cool, but it was by, I was by myself, you know. And then I I went back to Hawaii and I, with Haley, and I, was, I did we did all the same things, and it was just like so much better, you know. It just amplifies the whole experience, and that's kind of what it, it is really to have a partner. Or a, I even I, sometimes I even hate saying the word partner; it's too like partner, you know. But like, and to have that relationship, um, it just amplifies the whole life experience. So uh, yeah, it's pretty great. So you Not without his challenges, though, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get ready. But like you said, it, <laughs> it just ready. makes your... <laughs> get ready. Uh, it makes the appreciation, though, so much better when you get through, like, a hard time and you come through it. Yeah. You look at your spouse so differently. It's like, man, I would kill for you. Like, this is... Yeah. It's really cool. Um, So you guys are in the middle of... At the moment, what looks like an impossible feat to me you're doing like multiple shows dancing with the stars your tour getting ready for a disney special yes on top of probably more things um how do you manage to do that and protect your relationship because you guys are are basically co-partners in your shows 
-hmm. You're working in business. You're also newlyweds. You're also just like yeah. <laughs> everything. How do you yeah. like what boundaries are in place or what's your routine to make sure things stay good? Yeah, that's a good, that's a great, great question. Great question. I think that part of it, I, I think part of it, one, is realizing that this type of, this type of situation right now, sorry, it's okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this type of situation right now is is so temporary. You know what I mean, and it's 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 in a time when you know we're we're capable. We can do this. You know, we have the energy. We have the like. You know, we're out there doing it. Um, and so it's kind of like, all right, we're gonna put our heads down and we're just gonna go for it and make sure that we are we're strong, we're healthy. We we have this gift, you know, this privilege to be able to perform in front of thousands of people each night and to do what we love. Um, and uh, but there's, but for me, it's like the stolen moments, the little moments, the little like, just going over and just saying, "Hey, babe, how are you doing today?" Like, how you know, just like little things that like for me stack up, um, because there is there to be completely honest with you, like we have a day off today, so we'll go for a walk, we'll go just enjoy being outside, hold hands, and and that was one of the things that I fell in love with with Haley in the first place was that. I even said it in my vows. Like I, I always feel like I had to entertain and perform for somebody and like, Hey, 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 like, you know, and what I realized with Hey is like, we could just walk together in a park and hold hands. And I, and we felt connected and we felt at peace, at peace and content. And, um, so it's just those quiet moments and those little moments throughout the day, you know, it's not the, for me, it's not so much the big gestures. Um, it's the small little like glances, you know what I mean? It's, it's like the look, you know, just in a moment, just kind of like a little look and a little twinkle in the eye. And, and like that for me is like enough, enough of a moment to like get me through an entire week. You know what I mean? Really? Um, and, uh, yeah. What about you, babe? And sharing, sharing the stage. It's, it's really interesting. Cause at first I was like, oh, it's just going to be like a job for us, but it's really been amazing to watch like I'll be off stage and I'll be watching him and he's either talking or he's dancing. And I just like look at him and I'm like, that's my husband. Like, that's crazy. That's mm -hmm. so crazy. So it is those little moments and sharing the stage has been so much fun. And it's like, it's very, very, very rare for you to do this with the person that you love. We did so many tours that were separate and we were constantly traveling, constantly crossing our schedules. Like it was never lined up. And now we get to do it together, which is so amazing and rare. There was a time though, I, I, I will say there was a, a nice little moment that we had, um, you know, several shows ago. And, and I, what, what happened was she came off the stage. She just kind of, she seemed a little upset. I was like, are you okay, honey? She goes, well, I just feel like, I feel like I'm not, I can't remember what he said, but she just feels like, I feel like it's, there's always something wrong or something. And what happened was I realized that, and it was a good moment. We sat and chatted for like three hours after, you know, the show in our dressing room. Maybe it was not that long, but it, it was, it was a long time. <laughs> Close to that. But, but it was, um, but basically what it was, I was kind of had to reflect a little bit because what I realized what started happening was that I'm such a, Perfectionist. perfectionist or, or, you know, I, I just always want the show to be the best it possibly can be. So we danced through there a lot. So whenever we came off, I'd always be like, Oh, we need to work on that part. Oh, that part mm -hmm. was, we, that part was a little off balance for us. Oh, the, this turn was a lot. And I just started pointing out all the things that went wrong in that show. And because I was just wanting to make sure that we, we addressed this, so we could work on it for the next day. And what I realized is that I was just doing that every day. So all I was doing was just putting focus on all the things that went wrong in the show. When really so much went right, so much, it was so, improved. so, so many things improved, so much things got better, so many things were like fantastic, but I was only addressing the things that were wrong, um, cause I wanted to improve them. And what ended up happening was it just, it just started feeling like it was just like a constant critiquing or constant, you know, and it was a moment where I kind of, she kind of brought that up and I was like, you're absolutely right, you know, and I need to be more cautious and more aware of focusing on the good things that went right in that show because there's so many, yeah. you know, but we sometimes it's kind of a, re you know, it's a reflection in life a little bit. Sometimes we just don't celebrate the little moments and the celebrations and the triumphs 
because we just kind of expect them to, that's how it should be. And we just point out all the wrong things, you know what I mean? Um, and it was a good moment to be like, hey, so even like during the show, you know, when something feels good, I'm like, yeah. And like, we're like talking to each other on stage and we're like, pointing out all the good now. We're like, oh, that's, you know, that, oh, that felt so good. You know, we're having full conversations and stuff. And, and it was a great moment, you know, um, to catch where, you know, whatever you focus on is what you feel, where our focus goes, our energy flows. And, and, and so just to focus more on all the good that was going on, because I said this before, but like what's bad is always available, but so is what's good. Mm-hmm. And it depends. It's all dependent on what we focus on. And, um, and yeah, it was a good, it was a nice moment we had. It was nice. I will say there was something kind of funny is our recovery after the show. Well, we have like a little room in the back of the bus and we have the big Norma tech, like inflatable compression pants. And then we have the STEM machine that's like making us twitch. Yeah. And we'll be watching like a movie that's got like this really steamy scene or whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're laying in bed with the big compression pants and like twitching. And we're like, babe, this is married life. <laughs> this is really yeah. hot. <laughs> Super sexy. Oh, yeah. It's been great. It's uh, so when Sean gets stopped on the street, people ask her about gymnastics. People ask her about celebrity apprentice and they ask her about dancing with the stars and so we started having conversations about it but one thing she always would bring up is this this incredible brain you have Derek that is can create things like she's never seen and I guess I'm sharing this because I've been blessed to not have that genius that you have (laughs) but I can't imagine I can't imagine like because it's the same you know, your greatest asset can also be the the greatest uh, kind of ailment, if you yeah. will. And like that, that just vision for perfection that you have that has made you uh, build and, and grow all of these amazing sets and tours and all these things. I, I just love your self-awareness around that because it can, mm-hmm. you know, in this romantic relationship yeah. kind of come back to bite you. So kudos to you. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, also too is realizing too that like, perfectionism is the lowest standard you could have because it doesn't exist. And so you're just, you're just living in constant disappointment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're never going to be satisfied. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, I'm sure we can, I'm sure we've all experienced that where it, part of it is good because you keep striving to be better and to grow, but yeah. you never celebrate the good. You just like, it can be better, it can be better. You never like acknowledging, Oh, yeah. that, that was better. And that did get better. There was growth. Um, and yeah, so and that, that's like that's old behavior. It's like old, mm. you know. I call it my old ballroom dancer behavior when I used to compete because it was just like, no, it must be better. And and I even said that. I said I just I fall back into some of that old like ballroom dancer competitor, um, <laughs> you know, conditioning, and have to remind myself, hey, I'm okay. I'm yeah. you know we're we're it's not that we're good. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? um, I'm, but yeah. I'm curious, how, how have you guys built what you have? Because one thing that became apparent as I was talking with people at your wedding is that doing dance tours was not a thing before Derek and Haley started doing it. So how how have you done this? You know, like what's been your strategy? What's gone right? What's you know kind of lucked out? And that you're you're performing in front of thousands of people every night. Dancing yeah. with the Stars, I feel like was the only media love that dance got. But mm-hmm. beyond that, like. You know, people do music yeah. tours. It started tours in 2014 with Derek and Julianne. They created like, they created the first like dancing tour for dancers, strictly for dancers, where they sing and they they kind of like talk to people. But yeah, now, when it, and listen, there there was so you think you could dance had like a tour yeah. and and like she even went 2013 did that and yeah. Dance with Stars had an arena tour actually, where we did arenas and stuff, which was crazy, and then. And then like 2008 hit and it, there was no tour for like five years. It was like, it's kind of a time. And, and it, long story short, you know, we just did some charity events and they were like sellouts. And I was like, wait a minute, people are showing up to these things and we're not even doing anything special. So, um, that first tour we had to ask favors. I would try to convince people. I'm like, I think there's, I think people would want to come see this. And, um, and I fought for it, you know, and then eventually we did it. It was a big success and it opened up a door 
for more shows to kind of go out on the road and do things and and um yeah but, but for, the thing that i for me that i rely on the most is energy it's that's it really like you know uh when you come see the show and then i have to say of all the tours i've done this one i'm feel probably most proud of just because i spent so much time on the music building the music the soundtrack like really working hard on that um and the choreography you know had amazing you know choreographers um, Tisanja Chavez really spearheaded the whole project and she was just incredible. Pushed us to the point where I was like, this is too hard, Tisanja. She's like, no, you can do it, Derek. Um, but, uh, but for me, it's, 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 it's just another thing too is changing the intention of I want to, before being a competitor, it was about me, right? About I, I want to be like, look at me and like, I want to be the best and like, it's about me, 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 me. And then changing that intention, actually, it's funny. It happened with Sean Johnson. It happened with you, Sean. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I said your said your full name. I said I, you here. I talked about you like I said you were here. Sean um, Johnson. It was actually that season before, um, before we came on, and I remember, it. I was kind of in a way, kind of just selfish. Really, it was like I was really dancing. I was really helping my partners, doing you know, working with them. But it was really kind of like secretly, kind of like wanting to like show what I can do, you know what I mean? And then when I danced with you, there was a shift in me, and I actually talk about this, there was a shift in my entire intention where I was fully there to, like, serve you, to serve your experience, to serve, like, that. And that's when I started, like, the choreography got better, the creativity got better, the everything just, like, for me, at least, in that moment, that was a big shift in my dance social career was when I danced with you. Like, everything just, like, opened up because I wasn't thinking about myself. I was thinking about how can I serve you and like, like amplify this experience the most best possible and everything just elevated from there. And that's how what these tours are. It's like, how do we serve this audience? How do we give our energy to this audience? And people say, how do you do it? How do you have the energy? I'm like, that's why, because if I'm doing it for, for doing it for us, there's only so much energy you can have for that. It's kind of, it's not sustainable. But when you're serving, when your intention is that I'm going to to serve, it's like an endless well of energy that's, you know, even if you're exhausted, it's like, poof, you just, mm. you, can, you can tap into something really special. Yeah. That's really Even good. The, the performances that we've done on like television and the performances we've done on social media or whatever it is have kind of been our, essentially it's like our album of content that we're like, oh, this is the kind of stuff that you will get to see on tour. We actually, I think, only do one of the ones that we've ever done on TV. But but it's like that helps a lot to create the show because you're like, oh, yeah, we have all of these numbers. Let's like kind of piece them together and create a show with things that like you loved or that was Emmy, Emmy award winning and all that stuff. So it, it really is like an album of dance that we kind of create yeah. to put out on the road. What are you guys most excited about right now? Most excited about right now? I'm right excited now. to go. I'm excited to go have a day where I'm not in, on a plane. I know, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go walk around outside. Um, but I think in the, but by the way, it's it, truly, that's literally what I'm excited about. Like, I, I think I'm, I'm, I, I try to keep my, my thoughts at, like one day at a time, really. Cause if I think about everything that's happening, I'll get overwhelmed and just be like, ah, um, but I'm actually really excited about, uh, the next chapter in our lives. I'm excited. I'm excited to be a dad. You know? Oh, oh yeah. Yo, not yet. Not yet. But but I'm but, but I'm but I'm but I'm excited about it. I think it's you know um, I'm I'm I think at this point I think part of me is it's weird. I think even since since a kid I've always been like you know I'm gonna work really hard now and then I'll party later. You know what I mean? And and it's almost like I feel like I've done a lot now and I'm I feel like just like uh, okay I'm I'm excited to like for the next. You know the next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Our tour goes until the new year. We finish our final show is December thirtieth, 
So I think that's what I'm really excited for is to continue on with this show until the new year comes. And then it's like, like he said, new chapter, new opportunities, new year, new everything. Like we have kind of blank slate so much to look forward to in the new year without even having anything really planned. So Mm. I think that's what I'm most excited about. It's a new year. Nothing planned for 2024? I mean, there's things things here and there. (laughs) There's things. There's okay. things, but there's nothing things like concrete right now. Yeah, nothing major right now, at least. Are I guarantee in the next like... couple of months, it's just gonna start. It's gonna start <laughs> so racking like up. September next year, there might just be like a big announcement or something. Maybe, maybe. I know. <laughs> I was like, honestly, if it weren't for this tour, I'd be like, let's just whatever, whatever can happen. Let's start trying. But I'm like, I there's no way I can get pregnant on this tour. I would be. Yeah dead on stage by the way have yeah. you seen that trend sean where like somebody's pregnant and then like they like belly bump and yes. then the other person's <laughs> pregnant <laughs> and then the other person's like trying to like and then there's a yeah. stitch where it was like somebody's just like running away from them yeah i was like that's me oh now. gosh yeah. do not will that in there wait are you into existence oh my gosh so you and bc are kind of close okay wow okay that's funny yeah I know the pictures from the wedding of you guys were so fun. I love seeing the little prego bellies. Oh my gosh. It was so fun. I'm curious. Um, how do you guys approach ambition? Because as a couple, it seems like there's a million opportunities that come your way. There's a million opportunities that you could create. You know, you could sell out another tour in 2024. How do you, uh, how do you like put boundaries around your ambition and the possibilities, you know? I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely very ambitious for sure. Um, I think, um, you know, just with so many different things, I guess, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, um, it's a good question actually. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm trying to think about that. Yeah. I think timing is important, of course, for certain things, but, yeah. but like I, I, a part of me, I guess is that there's a bit of a scarcity that I feel sometimes being a dancer, I suppose, that was always drilled in me. Like, you know, I guess like any athlete or whatever, it's like you have, Mm -hmm. you know, your dance career is over at 25 or something like that. You know what I mean? That's like, and so for me, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm trying to squeeze, squeeze out my, you know, as much as, as, Mm -hmm. as I keep can, as I can, um, physically. Um, but while, you know, prepping for things in the future where I can start like directing more or choreographing or whatever, or whatever it is, but um, there's that sc- that, that scarcity that keeps me ambitious, I suppose. You know what I mean? Where I feel like there's like a there's a finite time that I want to try to get as much done as possible. Mm. But to balance it with, you know, th- new things in the future, like especially like you know a family, like like I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was gonna say. Was I'm like, I don't think we've ever really had many boundaries around ambition right now but i know coming up in this next chapter i think i think we'll still be extremely ambitious but there will be other things to consider so it's like will it affect us as a family us as a couple whatever it is and those are just conversations that we're gonna have to have and we'll have to decide together as as husband and wife actually a great one right now is that there's an opportunity to do something in new york but it would require us to live there for a year Mm-hmm. And it would be something that where I would be extremely busy. Um, and that's, that's, you know, you know, you have the agents that they're all like, Hey, this is, t- you gotta do this. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, hold on guys. Yeah. This is, we're, I'm in a different part of my life now. Like I can't mm-hmm. just be like, cool. It's like, I got to talk to my wife, you know, and I got to see like, what does that mean for us? You know what I mean? It makes sense. You know, are we going to be happy? Is she going to be happy? You know, because if she's not going to be happy, then I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do that. So, so it's, those are new conversations that even like my team Mm. have to learn. (laughs) They have to understand, you know, it's like, oh, hi, by the way, can't just do that anymore. There's more things to consider now. I'm so excited. dude. It's hard when you're at the fork in the road and you got like the dollar signs right there in front of you or that new thing that you dreamed of forever. And it's in some ways so much more tangible than like your marriage or your wife who, oh yeah, she'll be here today and tomorrow. But then, totally. you know, that that can if you compound over time. And then if you make too many decisions based off that immediate tangible thing, then it comes at a cost. So I'm a big fan of your guys's, gosh dang it, 
I'm not done yet. I have, two wait, more. No, I, done. I have I have one more question because okay, one thing that I learned nope. we talked to Mark. We BC. love you guys so no, much. I'm not done. And we're so no, excited. No, nope. no, we don't. Uh, no, we're so, you're good, you're good. I'm getting texts from the, Sue Medor. The They're Derek. done. <laughs> They're done. Oh, okay. You are totally. <laughs> we love you guys. You are totally fine. <laughs> If you have another question, we are not in a hurry at all. We literally have a day off, so you're fine. It's fine. No, Sean shut me down for the sake. This is one of those. This is one of those decisions. <laughs> no, no, I was just right. talking no, about. I know I have something right after this. Oh, you do. Yeah, yes, oh, Derek has something at one. <laughs> okay, we love you guys. We're excited to see you in Nashville. We'll link everything down below. Um, I'm just so excited for you guys. Well, you guys we are love crushing. you guys so much, and we we like again. You know, we're talked about like great examples in our lives and people who. We love surrounding ourselves with people, with great people, and and you guys have been a beautiful example to us, you know, and just in your marriage and in your relationship, and and the way you guys have grown together, and you built a beautiful family, and and you're and just like your your joyful, fun, um, you know, insight, helpful content, everything that you produce. Honestly, we we love it, and we, we just we can't get enough of you guys. We love you dearly, and and not just because we know you personally, but even uh, just just. Just seeing it all has just been wonderful. So thank you for being a beautiful example to us, guys. We love you. Yes, we really do. We adore you guys so much. Glad to have you as friends. All right, for those listening that want to check out uh, tickets or get tickets for Symphony of Dance by Derek and Haley, we'll link that down below. Uh, but thank you so much, and we'll, we'll be in touch. All right, guys. Love you all. Love you guys.